for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of his grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of your name. The name of Jesus charms our fears and bids our sorrows cease, sings music in the sinner's ears, brings life and health and peace. He speaks and listening to his voice, new life the dead receive. The mournful broken hearts rejoice, the humble poor believe. Look unto him, your Savior own, O fallen human race. Look and be saved through faith alone, be justified by grace. To God all glory, praise and love be now and ever given by saints below and saints above, the church in earth and heaven. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. The introduction to the first reading was fascinating. I want to share that with you. The Book of Lamentations is one of our most important sources of information about the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians in 587 BCE. Though the people admit that God's judgment was just, today's reading declares a fervent trust that God will not leave them forever. And I read from the book of Lamentations, the third chapter. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter, and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me Exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks and holy remembrance. I will exalt you, O
God's wrath is short, God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in all to you, O Lord, because you have lifted me. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up. Since I did the introduction to the first reading, let me do it for the second one as well. Paul encourages the Corinthians to honor their commitment to participate in the collection his churches are organizing for the Christians in Jerusalem. He presents Jesus as an example of selfless stewardship and reminds them that Christians have received abundantly so that they can share abundantly. From St. Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, reading from the eighth chapter. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little, little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. 
She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you, how can you say, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And when they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, this beautiful, bit muggy, but beautiful Sunday morning. And a welcome, <clears throat> warm welcome to those online as well as we gather to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning I'd like to focus on our gospel text with a nod to Christian author Will Willimon, one of Pastor Denny's favorites and one of my favorites. I'm going to be uh, cherry picking, if you will, a couple of his thoughts from a sermon that he preached uh, at Duke University. He was at one point in time the campus pastor at Duke, so I'll be lifting up some of his thoughts as well along the way. Yesterday, we celebrated here the life of Tom Elsass, a lifelong member here at Christ Lutheran Church. And at his graveside yesterday, we read a lesson that we often read at graveside services. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'd just like to share that quickly with you. Paul writes this, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O death, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. On this side of the grave, Death stings, doesn't it? On this side of the grave, death stings. It stings just about everywhere. In our text, there is this stinging going on. A woman is dying because of a chronic illness, 12 years of uncontrollable hemorrhaging. A little girl has already died. 
Her father stands helpless and desperate. He might as well be dead. This father is a leader of the synagogue, a ruler of the synagogue. And my guess is that he has heard hundreds, if not thousands, of sermons in his lifetime. Heard all the scriptural passages in what we would call the Old Testament. Yet now he's standing face to face with death, with the loss of his beloved daughter. I wonder if he's able to recall Psalm 23 in this moment, or Isaiah 43 in this moment. What can he do to defend himself against the sting of death? You know, in our lives, not only when when threatened by serious illness, not only when we stand at the graveside of a loved one, but every day there is death going on. There's death going on. One lady said after the collapse of her third marriage, so it seems I'm always having funerals. I'm always having funerals. And we get it, don't we? I mean, in the yes, middle of yesterday's homily, I was standing here, and it, and it struck me looking out at the folks gathered once again, that a funeral is not just for the grieving family, it's for all of us. It's for all of us, every one of us. We're all dealing with something. We're dealing with past griefs. We're dealing with current griefs. And maybe we're worried about griefs that are to come. Death meets us, not not just in a diagnosis from a doctor, but also in the face of the one who tells us we're not needed anymore at work. Or the one who's asked us out of a marriage. The betrayal of a friend. Or a loved one who can't forgive us, or we can't forgive them. As I was thinking about this text, it came to mind, I I wonder, with whom do we most identify with in this gospel lesson? Who do you identify with most today? Because there are plenty of folks here being stung by death. The woman the distraught, desperate father, the little girl, the baffled disciples, the crowd. What in the world is going on? And yet, intruding into this moment is another face, the strong, life-giving face of Jesus. And if you think that all this talk of death that I've been sharing in the first part of this sermon uh, is a downer, it's not. For one reason, the face of Jesus. Jesus was forever intruding into fixed, settled, hopeless situations and bringing life to us. Do you hear his strong voice speaking over the loud crying and laments? Go in peace. Your faith has made you well to the woman. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Just trust me, he says to the father. And to the little girl, he says, get up, little girl. Get up. And you can imagine him almost screaming it. Get up. I think, no, I know he's calling to you and to me and to us as well. And his voice is strong and commanding. He's saying to us, get up. Get up. Left to our own devices, our own power and strength, we cannot. We are caught, we are trapped, we're dead. There's a lot of deadness in this world, isn't there? A lot of deadness. But Jesus does not leave us there. God does not leave us there in Jesus. We don't have to wait for death to be defeated. The word is, get up! Now! Not just later, but now! Jesus cries it out, just as he called out to Lazarus. Do you remember that? Everybody's gathered around the tomb. Jesus is four days late to the funeral. Four days late to the funeral. Everybody's crying and weeping and some of them are kind of mad at Jesus for not being there and Jesus says what? He says, Lazarus come forth. 
Lazarus, come forth. Friends, we have to pay attention to this moment in time in our gospel. In this moment, nobody does anything except to cry out in the face of death. That's the only thing folks do. This is a moment that's not about them. It's not about us. It's about God and Jesus and what he does for us on our behalf. Do we get it? Do we get it? Robert Farrar Capon, another, another uh, wonderful Christian author, he's an Episcopalian priest, said this. And he's known for kind of his interesting way of looking at things and, and describing things, very unique perspective. He said this, Jesus came to raise the dead. Jesus came, that was his purpose, to raise the dead. I think when he says that, this is not what he, this is me interjecting here in the midst of the quote. I think of the dry bones in Ezekiel. Remember that old song we learned in Sunday school? Dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones. And they come back together again through the Holy Spirit of God. So this is back to the quote. And I quote, Jesus came to raise the dead. The only qualification for the, for the gift of the gospel is to be dead. The only qualification for the gospel is to be dead. You don't have to be smart. You don't have to be good. You don't have to be wonderful. You don't have to be anything. You just have to be dead. That's it. Unquote. It may be it is dead in our trespasses and iniquities. It, it may be dead in our fears and anxieties and troubles. It may be just dead. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, on this bright summer morning, we appear to be so full of life, and yet you know, seeing into our souls, that all is not well with us, some of us here feel hopeless. We grow old and become weaker. We're not able to do what we used to do in our youth. And sometimes we fear the future. Other, others of us face some seemingly impossible situation. Lord. We don't know whether to turn to the left or to the right. And sometimes we feel trapped and caught and paralyzed by our fear and anxiety. Lord, in all of our caughtness and all of our faults and foibles, all of our doubts and fears, come to us, Lord. Cry out to us, get up and come forth. Raise us up, O oh Lord. Bring us life. Great God, master over death, who raised the dead and healed the sick in body and soul, and who calls us home to yourself, bring us life we pray. It's in Jesus' name that we pray now and always. Amen.
we confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, you fill your church with a multitude of gifts. Open our hearts to the wondrous breadth of all who call upon your name. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, your goodness abounds. Multiply the fruits of the earth and rescue it from our wastefulness. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, you reign in steadfast love. Bring peace between nations ravaged by war or strife. And especially this morning, do we lift up Israel and Ukraine and illumine the paths of justice and freedom for those who lead those nations. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, your touch brings healing and your word revives us for life. Hear our prayers for all who are in need and for doctors, nurses, and health care workers who provide their care. Turn wailing into dancing and weeping into joy. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you gather us at your table of plenty. Where there is hunger among us, open our hands. Where we are indifferent to the needs of others, open our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, great is your faithfulness. We remember in thanksgiving our beloved dead, who with all the saints now sing without ceasing in your realm of glory. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, Holy and merciful God, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A warm welcome on a warm Sunday morning. So good to have you with us here at Christ Lutheran Church, both here in the sacristy and at home online. Just one announcement, really, and that is a huge thank you to all who made our Vacation Bible School a wonderful success. Thank you to one and all. And now, a beautiful offertory. shall the king say unto them, A 
upon his right hand. Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. From the foundation of the world, from the foundation of the world, come ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. From the foundation of the world, come ye blessed of my Father. <coughs> I was a hungered and ye gave me meat. I was a thirst and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick, sick and ye visited me. I was in a prison, and ye came unto me, ye came unto me. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and with all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. be seated. All those who confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are welcome to his table. As we invite you to come forward, you may remain at the communion rail as long as you'd like, either kneeling or standing, or you can simply return to the pews and meditate there. If you would prefer grape juice or gluten-free wafers, just ask Pastor Tim or me. No matter where you commune, whether it's here in the sanctuary or at home online, please be sure that as you receive the bread and wine, you are receiving the body and blood of Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. Come, for all is now ready.
Please rise for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of our nation this week, we pause for a time of prayer. O oh God, who created and loves all people, in this week of cookouts and fireworks, parades and pool parties, we pause to remember the best of our nation's aspirations and values. We give thanks for those who made great sacrifices for the sake of the principles of equality and liberty, for life and the pursuit of happiness. We lament the many ways and countless times that we have fallen short of the hopes of not only the founders of this nation, but of you, the Lord of all. Forgive us for not fulfilling the great aims this country sought to represent to the world. Send your spirit to help us become the country you call us to be. When we rest and play, eat and celebrate this week, do not let us forget those unable to do likewise. Inspire in us a zeal for the equality in which you create all people a passion to seek abundant life for all people, a relentless drive to provide liberty for all people, and the pursuit of happiness, not only for ourselves and those like us, but for all people. May our country truly be a refuge for the tired, the poor, 
and those yearning to be free, free from fear, free from poverty, free from oppression, free from exploitation, free from violence, free from war, free from suffering, and free from hopelessness. May our nation truly be a place of justice, tranquility, and welfare for all people. Amen. Thanks be to God.